Gaius is an overpowered, introverted, ugly sage living in a world where people are randomly blessed by the gods with one of the four crests that can grant them absolute power. Gaius has completed all of his achievements in life, except for getting women obviously, and has become so strong that he is able to decimate a freaking dragon in a matter of seconds. He has been blessed with three crests, but his hunger for absolute power drives him to seek the fourth crest. However, these crests can only be acquired at birth, so to gain the fourth crest, Gaius casts a forbidden reincarnation spell and goes through the cycle of rebirth on his own, sacrificing his other three crests. Thousands of years later, he gets reincarnated as a young teenager named Mafias. Although he has attained the fourth crest in his new life, unfortunately for him, this very crest that he thrived for his entire past life is now considered to be the weakest, to the point that it is called the crest of failure. However, Matthias still remains excited to see how his new life will turn out to be and sets a goal to enter the Magic Academy in order to learn the new ways of this world and to become stronger. He travels to the capital city with a local merchant when, suddenly, he senses that a dangerous monster is approaching them. Out of nowhere, a giant calamity level monster comes before them. But before the merchant can even make a grasp of the situation, Matthias defeats it with ease and shows that even with the weakest crest, he exceeds all expectations. Upon reaching the peaceful capital, Matthias goes to the armory shop looking for powerful swords, where he finds a young adventurer named Alma begging the owner of the store to fix her friend's magical word. Alma is too loud for Matthias to focus on anything else at all, so he decides to help her out first. He approaches her, telling her that he has the capabilities to get her sword enchanted, and reveals his fourth crest to her. Although this particular crest makes it impossible for any crest users to do anything efficiently, Alma decides to put her trust in Matthias and gives him a rare, expensive magic stone to use to enchant the sword. But first, the two get introduced to each other and quickly become friends. Alma's friend Lori comes to the shop, and just upon seeing her, Matthias falls in love at first sight. Learning that this absolute beauty is the one who needs her sword enchanted, Matthias tries to make a good impression in front of her. His sudden formal behavior towards Luri makes Alma jealous, as he wasn't acting in such a gentle manner when he was talking with her earlier. But anyway, Luri also formally introduces herself and mentions to Matthias that she is currently single, implying that she has taken a liking to this 40-year-old man who is inside a 12-year-old's body. Now that all of them are acquainted with each other, Matthias puts the magic stone inside Luri's sword and enchants it in no time. Luri gives her new sword a try and accidentally cuts through the table like butter, making everyone realize how overpowered her sword has turned into, and the fact that it only took Matthias seconds to enchant such a high-level magical sword makes it clear to them that Matthias is someone special. Soon after, Matthias, whose goal was to join the Magic Academy, takes the entrance exam. There he runs into his love interest, Luri, and Alma who are also here to take the entrance exams. Luri takes the swordsmanship test, and with the help of her new overpowered sword, she defeats the examiner. Matthias takes the test next, but because he was the one who enchanted Luri's sword, a special examiner is assigned to him to evaluate his performance. This guy apparently is an acquaintance of Matthias's father, Castor, and that is why he wants to see what Castor has taught his son. The guy promises Matthias that if he can impress him, he will personally vouch to the higher-ups to allow Matthias to pass regardless of his other test scores. Although Matthias would have passed in all of the other tests because he is the main character, he agrees with the examiner's terms and takes him on a duel. They parry each other's strikes, but in no time, Matthias gets the upper hand and disarms the examiner, forcing him to surrender. After the swordsmanship test, the three friends take the magic control test, where Luri impresses everyone by shooting down all of the target signs with precision. Matthias is surprised to find out that no one in this day and age knows how to use magic without reciting spells. When his turn comes up, he is slightly hesitant because the casting range of the Crest of Failure is very low, and that is why he doesn't think his attack will even reach a third of the way to the target sign. So, he uses one of his more explosive magical attacks, and its shockwaves are enough to destroy the target signs. After passing all of the tests, Matthias joins the Magic Academy along with Alma and Luri. 
Bro is completely allured by Lori's beauty, which is technically very wrong because she is still a minor and he, by soul, is not. But whatever. During the opening ceremony, the headmaster, Eduard, in his rather short speech, straightforwardly tells the new students to work on their skills, as that is the only option for them to achieve greatness. On his way out, Eduard calls Matthias to his office. Matthias naturally assumes that he is in trouble, but that is not the case here. Before explaining the reason for summoning Matthias and all the other professors here, the headmaster first acknowledges the talent of this young boy because Matthias was also able to effortlessly release his magic without casting any spells away that was lost in time hundreds of years ago. The headmaster believes that Matthias will be best suited to teach the students wordless spell casting. According to Eduard, the Royal Magic Academy in the capital has a certain curriculum that this second academy has to follow, and according to that curriculum, the professors can only teach their students how to use magic by incanting spells. To change that curriculum, the headmaster wants Matthias to prove in the upcoming inter-school competition that his wordless spell is way more powerful than his incanted spell casting. The headmaster requests that Matthias also teach the other professors here how to use wordless casting as well so that they can teach more students on their own. Matthias accepts this challenge, and after teaching the other instructors the basics, he joins as a special guest instructor for his own class on his first day here. He first demonstrates how wordless casting works and surprises everyone with his skills. Some of the students are so amazed by Matthias's technique that they start to suspect that he is a demon. Anyway, Matthias begins the session, and many students show promise, including Alma, who demonstrates how capable she has become already. Luri, on the other hand, struggles to adjust to this new technique, so Matthias comes to help her. She runs out of her magic, so Matthias holds her hand, which is what he claims to be the only way to transfer his magic to her. Yeah, right? Fast forward to the day of the inter-school competition, a month later. The three friends gather together to discuss their game plan for today. Luri hopes that there will be no magically chosen ones from their opponent academy this year. Apparently, these chosen ones from the first academy always tend to make their appearance whenever it looks like the second academy is about to win. This doesn't worry Matthias at the least as he is the strongest sage out there. So, he goes to the battle arena for his first duel and takes on three bullies from the first academy all by himself. The three bullies immediately starts mocking Matthias for having the weakest crest. Matthias ignores their taunts and begins to analyze them when he suddenly senses an ominous aura coming from one of them. He realizes that one of the opponents he is facing is a demon in disguise. So, he quickly wipes out the two humans first to deal with the demon and starts attacking him. The demon uses wordless casting, which should not have been taught to any human students in this era. Matthias realizes that the demons have deeply infiltrated the first academy over time and have manipulated the teaching curriculum with the goal of making human mages as weak as possible, which explains why wordless casting is no longer being taught to the students of this era. He exposes the demon by shattering his disguise spell and eliminates him. While the professors inspect the corpse of the demon, Luri rushes to Matthias and gives him a hug. After making sure that he is alright, she lets him go and finally realizes that she was getting a bit too touchy-touchy with him. Later at the royal castle, both Matthias and the second academy's headmaster Eduard are summoned by the king to personally congratulate them on exposing the demon in disguise. The king expresses how much he is impressed by this young boy's accomplishments and even wants to reward him with lands or properties. But because he knows that if he does so, it will soon become public information that the demons have infiltrated their ranks. So, instead, the king decides to give Matthias something in private and offers him a magic sword with a double enchantment that he himself had received from the town's blacksmith. Matthias reveals that he himself was the guy who made this very sword for the blacksmith. So he requests something else, specifically the rights to obtain the resources found in this kingdom's dungeons. Matthias knows from his past life experience that the dungeons have the best resources, which are rare enough that kingdoms would go to war over these treasures. However, since it has been a thousand years since then, Matthias thinks that the king won't know about the dungeon's worth, and that is why he is making this risky request. As expected, the king grants Matthias's request and then moves on to the next matter. 
revealing to both Matthias and Eduard that their kingdom's top four mages, called the Four Chosen Ones, have vanished right after the demon's expose. The king has already deduced that all four of them are also demons, and that makes him realize that there are many, many more hidden imposters among them. Matthias suspects that the demons no longer want to hide among the humans since the most powerful ones among them have exposed their real identities. And that means that the demon race will soon band together and go for an all-out war against this kingdom. Matthias calculates that it will take the demons three months to prepare for the war, so he suggests that they cover the entire kingdom with a barrier before the demons make their return again. Matthias believes that if all of the students in the Magic Academy work together, they will be able to create a permanent barrier using a divine class artifact. Matthias also advises the king to continue teaching wordless casting to the students in the meantime as well. The king blindly puts all his trust in this kid because he is acting the most competent here and appoints him as the official leader of the battle against the demons. Soon after, Matthias goes to the treasury room of the royal castle, looking for rare gemstones that he will need to create the barrier. He finds a rare sword there that he himself had crafted in his previous life and decides to use it for the barrier's core. He also takes an enchanted pendant that increases the gains granted by experience points. Afterwards, he goes to the academy to help the students become better at wordless casting and then reveals his plan of creating a barrier to his friends Alma and Luri. Matthias still needs more materials for the barrier, so he decides to head to a dungeon to collect them and invites Alma and Luri to come with him. The girls hesitate to join Matthias not because they feel uncomfortable near him, but because they think they will only hold him back. Alma mentions that she is only good at archery which, according to her, is not best suited for combat. However, Matthias proves her wrong and demonstrates how deadly an archer can become if they infuse their magic inside their arrow. Luri becomes eager to learn how to infuse magic into their weapons and once again takes advantage of the situation by getting touchy-touchy with Maddie. Now that the girls are starting to have confidence in themselves, Matthias takes them to the entrance of the dungeon which is situated right beneath their magic academy. Like any other fantasy anime, this dungeon also has several floors, and because the three are just on the first floor, Matthias doesn't think the monsters here will be too tough. In fact, he is so confident that the monsters on this floor are weak that he personally goes to fetch a monster and brings a small shell-like monster, telling Alma to practice her archery skills by shooting at it. Alma channels her magic into the arrow, and at one go, she cracks the shell of the monster. She continues to practice her technique and even becomes able to change the arrow's trajectory at will. Now that she is confident in her own abilities, she goes off alone to collect the Magistone loot drops by eliminating the monsters on this floor. With Alma gone, Luri takes the opportunity to get close to Mathias and asks him to help her become strong as well. Matthias agrees to teach her about enchantment since she uses pure magic spells, but before getting straight into it, he breaks the dungeon walls to use the bricks to make weapons. According to Luri, dungeon walls are typically invulnerable to any damage, so she finds it surprising that Matthias here was able to destroy the walls with such ease. Matthias teaches Luri how to refine the dungeon wall bricks by using several magical spells on them at once and she successfully creates pure clusters of iron and mithril ores. Using these ores, the two begin enchanting their weapons. Shortly after, Alma makes her return after collecting enough magistones and becomes shocked to see that Luri has crafted herself a sword that is strong enough to break through walls. Luri enchants Alma's weapons and armor and becomes well equipped herself as well. So, with them fully prepared for the challenge, Mafias considers skipping to the 10th floor, telling the two that they are now strong enough to handle the dangers of that level. The tenth floor looks much different than the first floor and gives off the vibe of a dripstone cave. The girls take down the tiny monsters on this floor with ease as well. By defeating the monsters, they gain experience points, and with the boost coming from Matthias's pendant, they level up at a faster pace. Suddenly, a dungeon dog appears and attacks the girls. Matthias doesn't step in, as he believes that the girls are competent enough to defeat the monster themselves, and they do so with great teamwork. As it is almost nighttime, Matthias sets up a small barrier, telling the girls to rest inside, 
and decides to head to the 25th floor alone to extract the materials he needs to set up the kingdom's barrier. Alma thinks that it is a bad idea because the only party that had ever reached that floor was a party of 30 mages who were all protected by Gaius, the god of magic. Alma's statement confuses Matthias as he doesn't understand why his previous life self, Gaius, is now known as the god of magic. He assumes that it must be some other Gaius, so he ignores it and heads to the 25th floor. While gathering adamantite, he senses a strong monster residing on the deeper floors, so he unhesitantly takes the challenge, being confident that he will be able to win against it by utilizing his past life's knowledge, experience, and the wits that he still possesses. He immediately plunges down there and annihilates all the regular monsters on that floor in an instant, forcing the boss monster, the Arc Serpent, to show herself. The Arc Serpent's attacks are deadly enough to kill Mathias with one hit. Not only that, its venom can corrode the ground itself and also toxify the air, but Mathias doesn't get scared. Rather, he becomes excited, as this will be his first proper challenge in this new life. He lets himself be devoured by the serpent and uses his explosive magic inside its mouth. However, it is not enough to damage the serpent, so Mathias unsheaths his sword, infuses it with a vast amount of magic, and lands a dimension-ripping slash on the serpent that causes an earthquake heavy enough to scare the girls who are on the 10th floor. Two demon entities in the shadows also sense this sudden burst of magic and wonder who this person might be, as they don't think any human from this generation has this much power. With the mission completed, the gang heads to the Adventurer's Guild to sell the goods that they collected in the dungeon. The receptionist underestimates Mathias's dungeon party because his crest is considered the weakest. So Mathias shuts her up, revealing the boss monster's severed head to her. He sells the monster's head to her, along with its gigantic magic stone. Although this magistone is rare enough to be considered a national treasure, Mathias is still giving it away as he needs an even bigger one to create the kingdom's barrier. The receptionist isn't sure if her guild can even afford these items. In the end, she trades these items with them for 750 gold. Mathias offers to give both Alma and Luri their equal shares of the gold, but they refuse to take it as they haven't made any contributions to it. They walk back to the town when suddenly Matthias senses an ominous energy going straight towards their magic academy. The ominous aura is coming from two demons who are here looking for the mysterious human who is responsible for taking the life of their comrade. Judging by the two demons' powers, Matthias realizes that one of them is stronger than the demon he defeated earlier. So, he decides to deal with this demon personally and also requests that Alma and Luri fight with the weaker one, promising them that they are now strong enough to put up a good fight. In the blink of an eye, Matthias ambushes the weaker demon, who is the subordinate of the stronger demon, Ashral. The weaker demon blocks Matthias's surprise attack, which just shows the innate power difference they have. Ashral launches a deadly fire blast spell on Matthias, but he manages to neutralize it completely and takes control over it to hit Ashral. Using a pre-planned strategy, Matthias distracts the two demons, allowing Alma to hit the weaker demon with an enchanted arrow, which begins to disrupt his magic power, causing him to slow down. The weaker demon targets Alma and Luri and splits up from Ashral which was all according to Matthias's plan. Ashral prepares a large-scale attack, but before he can finish preparing his casting circle, Matthias destroys it, showing his wisdom and knowledge about magic. Ashral becomes enraged, so he brings out his sword to fight physically. Although Matthias is weaker in terms of physical strength, he skillfully avoids all of the attacks, and with the combat experience from his past life, he gets the upper hand. Ashral realizes that retreating is the only option for him, but Matthias doesn't allow him to escape. He constricts the demon using an occlusion orb and renders him unconscious. Ashral falls from the sky and lands down in the streets, leading him to become exposed in front of the crowd, causing them to panic. With the main villain defeated, Matthias watches over the fight of his two friends against the weaker demon. Alma continues to hit the demon with her enchanted arrows created by Luri. Right after dealing the damage, they quickly withdraw and hide behind the buildings to get away from the sight of the demon. This is a great strategy to ensure that they can avoid being attacked by the demon. So Matthias becomes proud of them and starts rooting for their win. From his perspective, the girls have proven their worth already, 
so he decides to finish things off. He tells the weaker demon that he has already defeated his boss, and launches a simple light spell at him that is so effective against the demon race that a single strike of it can slay them. The demon naturally tries to escape, but Alma shoots one of his wings down, and Matthias lands the finishing blow, putting an end to this battle. The people of the town who have witnessed this event become wildered by the fact that three academy students managed to defeat two demons on their own. Matthias, being a true introvert, doesn't want to be the center of attention. He quickly grabs both of his friends and flies away from them. Soon after this incident, the king summons Matthias, Alma, and Luri, congratulating them on defeating the two demons. Just like the last time, he offers to give each of them a reward and asks Matthias what he would like to have. This time, Matthias requests that the king find him as many dungeons as possible. On the other hand, both Alma and Luri request that the king compensate them with some money. The king gladly accepts all three students' requests and continues to talk when Matthias interrupts him. He senses a demon spying on them using a magic crystal. By reversing the connection like a true hacker, Matthias sends a powerful attack to the demon, which causes him to scream in pain. The king instantly recognizes the voice as Erhard's, the former captain of the mage's order. Matthias quickly pinpoints the location of Erhard's and gives the coordinates to the king who recognizes the place as an abandoned village. Matthias considers paying a visit to the demons, but because of his crest of failure, he is no longer able to use teleportation spells at long ranges. So, instead, he comes up with a better idea and heads off to the dark mountains with Alma and Luri, looking for a legendary creature. Shortly after, they find a dragon resting in peace when Matthias reveals that he intends to use this terrifying dragon as a means of transportation. This very dragon named Iris is responsible for destroying many kingdoms in the past. But Matthias doesn't care because he defeated and tamed her in his past life. So, he approaches her regardless of his friend's warnings and disarms her completely. Seeing that he is the only guy who can speak dragon language, Iris realizes that this frail young boy is none other than Gaius the Mad Sage, who unlived himself a thousand years ago. Anyway, Iris becomes terrified by Matthias's sudden presence and assumes the worst. So, she starts begging for her life. Matthias clears the misunderstanding, explaining the situation to her, and politely asks her to give him a ride to the demon's hideout. Iris unfortunately has her wings torn up and blames it on Matthias, telling him that when he had unalived himself, many recurring explosions took place in all of the kingdoms, sending the human race back to the stone race. One of those explosions caused her wings to tear apart. Bro doesn't care about what happened thousands of years ago and simply heals Iris's wings, making her able to fly once again. Before introducing Iris to his friends, Matthias forbids Iris from telling anyone about his reincarnation. Iris starts to speak in the human language and introduces herself to Alma and Luri, shocking them to the core. With all of them acquainted, they begin their journey to the demon village on Iris's back. As Iris is about to increase her flying speed, Matthias stops her, asking her how fast she was about to go. Iris explains that she wanted to increase her speed to the maximum, which was what Gaius's friend Reuter was able to endure. Luri recognizes Reuter as the god of swords, which once again confuses Matthias, as he doesn't understand why the gods that the people of this era worship share his own name and his past life's friends' names. In any case, Matthias explains to Iris that unlike Reuter, ordinary humans like Alma and Luri can't handle such speed. So, she starts flying at a very steady pace and heads straight for the demon village. Soon after, Matthias finds a demon guarding the ominous-looking palace, so he first takes him out from behind. Seeing that Matthias is able to slice down a demon in an instant, both Alma and Luri wonder if their friend is even human and Iris feels glad that she didn't accidentally anger Matthias earlier. Matthias senses two demonic presences inside the palace, so he figures that one of them is Erhard, the former captain of the mage's order. But the other one is still unknown to him, and judging by his powerful aura, 
Matthias states that the other one is far superior to Erhard. Matthias is confident in his own abilities, but before he can head in, Iris crashes against the palace, as she has forgotten how to land because she has not flown for thousands of years. With Iris breaking the walls of the palace, Matthias, Alma, and Luri head inside. Matthias communicates with Alma and Luri using a telepathy spell to ensure that the demons do not hear them and tells them to act in the offense this time. He believes that both of them are strong enough already to deal with these two demons, and he promises them that he will act as a supporter so that nothing goes wrong. With Matthias's assurance, the two girls proceed further inside when Matthias detects that there are two demons here hiding using a concealment spell. The only way to conceal someone is by hiding inside a place that is completely devoid of magic. So, Luri begins to look for that place and finds a winged demon hiding behind the table. Matthias reveals the demon Erhard by nullifying his spell, but Erhard doesn't even realize that he has been exposed. So, Alma attacks him with her enchanted arrow and hits him straight in the forehead. Her little arrow doesn't hurt the demon at all, rather, it infuriates him. Judging by the appearance, Erhard assumes that the young man here is Matthias, but he doesn't believe it completely, as it would take a lot more time for Matthias to reach here from the capital. Matthias showcases his offensive skills and makes it clear to Erhard that he isn't some fake imposter. While they are both engaged in combat, Alma tries to deal some damage from the sidelines, and although her arrows manage to pierce through Erhard's back, they do no damage to him. As Erhard begins to mock Alma and Luri, calling them a bunch of useless ants, he starts to feel immense pain and realizes that he has been badly poisoned by the same arrows that he neglected, thinking they were harmless. As Erhard starts to lose consciousness with the toxins kicking in, he regrets not fighting the real Mafias, so he doesn't allow himself to take the L, pushes himself to the absolute limits, and transforms into his true demonic form of disfortune. When someone takes this form, they attain a vast amount of magic power and strength in exchange for their life. Although, in this form, it will be dangerous for Alma and Luri to stay here. It's no problem for Matthias, and he easily deals with Erhard by secretly poisoning him even more. With Erhard's body giving up, Alma finishes the job by headshotting him with her enchanted arrow. Now that the weaker demon is defeated, Matthias tells the girls to head back outside to Iris as he must alone face the other demon. To reveal the hidden demon, Matthias crushes a few magic stones to release their magic into the surrounding air, as it will help get rid of the mist. As the mist fades away, the hidden demon materializes, revealing that he was hiding himself by turning into that very mist. The demon commends Matthias for figuring out everything but calls it a shame as he believes this talented kid is going to die here. In light speed, the demon attacks Matthias, who parries the blow with a confident smile. But shortly after, his smile fades away as the demon increases his speed even more and cuts off his arm. With Matthias's right arm gone, the demon begins to underestimate him. In the meantime, Matthias completely analyzes the demon's movements, and using one of his overpowered cheat skills, he then reattaches his severed arm. Blood claims that he had imbued his arms with recovery spells before their battle, just in case of such scenarios. Anyway, with the analysis complete, Matthias is able to dodge each and every attack of the demon with the minimum movements. The demon realizes that he doesn't stand a chance against this young prodigy, so he also goes through the same transformation as Erhard in exchange for his life. But mid-transformation, Matthias nullifies the ritual with another one of his cheat skills. So, the demon chooses an alternative option, and once again turns himself into a mist. Unsurprisingly, Matthias dispels that as well, making the demon question how this guy has so many countermeasures in his arsenal. I mean, blood is the main character, so nothing much needs to be explained here. With the demon's battle spirit gone, Matthias forces the demon to absorb so much magic that he explodes, revealing a giant purple crystal in the middle of the crater. Luri jumps down from Iris to check if her dear Maddie is okay, and she doesn't miss the opportunity to hug him passionately. Alma the third wheel doesn't let the two have their moment and comes nagging them, asking what this purple crystal is. 
According to Matthias, this giant crystal is called the Dragon Bane Pillar, which can harvest magic from the very core of this planet. Since the demons were the ones who planted this core, Matthias figures that they did so in order to summon a horde of boss monsters in the royal capital. Although the spawning has already begun, Matthias thinks there is no need for them to panic, as he believes that the explosion earlier has shifted the spawn point of the monsters 10 kilometers away from the capital. Still, they will definitely need to deal with the monsters, so Matthias heads back to the city with the girls, hoping to seek help from the Magic Academy to repel the monsters. While on their way, Matthias comes up with a great idea to add Iris to his harem, telling them to join as students at their Magic Academy by taking a human form. Accordingly, Iris turns into a crimson lowly and continues their way to the city. Upon reaching there, Matthias gives the report back to the headmaster about him slaying the demons that were trying to antagonize the city, and then introduces him to his friend Iris, requesting that he accept her as a transfer student. However, nepotism is not allowed in this world regardless of a person's status, so the headmaster tells Iris to take the entrance test. Matthias asks for permission to watch the test to ensure that Iris the overpowered dragon doesn't accidentally lose control over her powers and destroy the entire city. During the test the next day, Iris aces the swordsmanship exam and blasts the examiner away into the sky as if he were someone from Team Rocket. Up next, Iris takes the magic control test and demonstrates how inexplicably powerful her magical abilities are. However, she fails to hit the small target, so she uses the shockwave method that Matthias used during his exams and completely blows up the training grounds, making the headmaster want to fail her because she is too overpowered to be an ordinary student, but at Matthias's request, he finally allows it, adding another weirdo to the story. A few days later, Matthias once again starts gathering materials for the barrier, Many students are given the job of miners to find the necessary magic crystals. However, the extraction rate is too low because most of them do not have the Crest of Glory, which enhances physical and weapon abilities. So, Matthias suggests to the headmaster that they seek help from the First Academy since most of their students are blessed with the Crest of Glory. But the headmaster believes that is nearly impossible, as the First and Second Academy have never gotten along and will not cooperate regardless of the situation. Still, the headmaster decides to give it a shot, and with the help of the king, he summons the headmaster of the First Academy Facus to his office. The two headmasters immediately get into an argument over who's superior to the other. The headmaster of the Second Academy, Eduard, doesn't care too much about it, as his only goal is to set up the barrier in order to keep the kingdom safe from the demon's attack. So, he asks the headmaster of the First Academy to aid him with the students with the Crest of Glory. Facus's ego makes him refuse to cooperate with the Second Academy, as he considers them to be inferior to his academy. Eduard reminds Facus of the results of the inter-school competition, in which the Second Academy proved that they were not inferior to the First Academy. Rather, the First Academy was only winning all this time because they had demons disguised as their top students. Facus still refuses to acknowledge the Second Academy's strength, so Matthias hits them with the idea to hold another competition where the loser will have to do whatever the winner asks. Facus agrees to go with the idea but adds his own condition, which is to not allow Matthias and his friends to participate in that competition. Matthias agrees to his terms and tells Edward not to worry, as he will make sure to shut the loudmouths of the First Academy up once and for all. For the competition, the First Academy goes all out and sends all of their students. Matthias, who planned to use Iris to deal with the First Academy since Facus doesn't know about her, discards that idea as he believes that none of the students of the First Academy are that good. Against dozens of First Academy students, the Second Academy only sends out five students, whose crests aren't even up to the mark. Yet, due to their superiority in magic and wordless casting, the Second Academy students annihilate all of the First Academy students before they can even incapacitate their spells. The competition turns out to be completely one-sided because of this single advantage. Still, Facus refuses to accept that his academy has lost, as he believes that these five students sent by Edward are similar gifted monsters like Matthias. 
Edward tries to make him understand that every one of his students knows wordless casting. But Fakus refuses to listen and tells Edward to make the harmless-looking girl fight against his students. The horrible-looking girl here grabs a sword and unintentionally bends the steel like rubber, making him realize that she too is a monster. Fakus keeps acting in his childish manner, so his majesty himself descends there and orders the royal guards to take this useless loser away. After dealing with the dumb headmaster, the king orders the students of the first academy to collaborate with the second academy. Accordingly, the first academy students join the second academy students to mine mithril for the barrier. On the other hand, Mafias, Alma, and Lori go back to the dungeons again to find the largest magstone ever, as they will need at least half a meter to use it as the barrier core. Mafias doesn't think it will be a hard task, as they would need to just find the right monster to kill. Since Iris herself is a moster, she has a magistone that is almost the size of one meter. But Mathias promises Iris that he won't be going to eliminate her. Instead, he decides to summon a monster and uses Lurie's help to cast the magic circle. He also assists Lurie in casting the magic circle, which allows her to concentrate so much that she starts to make happy noises. Anyway, Iris, who doesn't have any control over her powers, imbues a great deal of her magic with the magic circle, which summons a monster so strong that it starts to destroy the floor. The group starts running away for their lives, but the dragon monster follows their trail behind them to an open spot. This is exactly what Matthias had wanted, so he happily decides to subdue it. Using Iris as bait, Matthias buys Lori enough time to infuse Alma's arrows with toxins so she doesn't miss a single shot. In the meantime, Matthias himself casts several magic blocking circles to ensure that the monster doesn't use dragon breath on them. With all of the preparations made, Iris taunts the monster into releasing its dragon's breath, and Matthias uses the monster's own spell against him to eliminate him. They successfully extract a large magistone from the monster's remains and then take it back to the academy. Now that their adventuring party has four members, Matthias decides to work on their teamwork and creates his own specialized training field to help Iris have better control of her powers. Through Matthias' instructions, Iris learns how to avoid attacks and move more humanely. In the meantime, Matthias teaches Luri more enchantment spells and to repay his debt. She crafts him a golden sword with a total of eight spells enchanted inside of it. Luri also enchants her own, Alma's, and Iris's weapons, who all become surprised by their destructive powers. With all three of the girls being stacked with overpowered equipment, Matthias takes them all at once and still defeats them with ease. A few days later, the headmaster of the second academy, Eduard, summons all of the students, commencing the operation of setting the barrier around the royal capital. The students give it their all to help Matthias set up the barrier, when suddenly Matthias detects a demonic presence coming from the outskirts of the city. He assumes that this aura is coming from the army of demons, who are using a teleportation spell to come here directly. However, he cannot deal with them this time as he is busy setting up the barrier, so he tasks Alma and Luri with the job of dealing with them, showing how much he trusts them both. When Alma and Luri arrive at the place where the demonic presence was generated, they find a large portal in the sky, indicating that the demons will use this path to come here. Luri quickly makes the best offensive arrows for Alma to use against the demons. Oh, a classmate of theirs is also with them for no reason. Anyway, as the first demon comes out of the portal, Alma immediately strikes his heart with her arrow, eliminating him with a single hit. Another one follows through and makes a counterattack to take down Alma. But Luri slices him in half with a simple slash of her sword. The teleportation portal disappears with the demon's defeat, making Alma and Luri assume that they are done with their task. But then, another big surge of magic starts coming from the capital, making both of them realize that this was just a diversion to make them go away from the city. They hurry back to Matthias for his guidance, who tells them to go to the second academy, anticipating that the portal will open there. The girls arrive at the place just in time and join the other students and the headmaster to defend their academy. The first demon comes through the portal and attacks all the students with a powerful fire spell. The demon smirks as he believes that he has gotten rid of these pests, 
but once the dust settles, he is shocked to see that the students defended themselves by making a magical shield. The students take the turn to attack, but none of their spells reach the demon, as he is too high. So, Alma steps up and fires her enchanted bow at the demon, which the demon unfortunately stops using his bare hands. Realizing that they cannot defeat the demon in a straightforward manner, Alma turns to Luri, who is in the middle of conjuring a magic circle. She keeps failing, as the magic circle she is trying to cast is very complex. So, Alma and the other students give all of their efforts to buy Luri some time to do it. Seeing her classmates' valiant efforts, Luri crafts the deadliest magical arrow for Alma. Alma shoots this arrow at the demon, allowing the others to cast their spells. Although the students of the second academy have defeated one strong demon, many more demons of similar power begin to come out of the portal. Alma doesn't give up yet and keeps fighting to buy enough time for their cheat code mafias to make it here. Before any blood splatters, Matthias arrives there, having prepared the barrier, and takes all of the demons by himself. Before fighting them, Matthias gives them a chance to beg for mercy, but they choose to die in humiliation. So, he grants their wishes and skillfully defeats all of them at their full power. With the demons taken care of, Matthias celebrates their victory with his friends and gives Luri the credit telling her that it was because of her enchanted sword that he was able to defeat them. This cheeky liar will do anything to get laid, but whatever, the preparations for the barrier have already been made. So, Mafia's heads to the barrier site and adds the Magistone as the core, which activates the barrier and lights up the entire sky, creating a beautiful view for the people to enjoy. Although the barrier is now set, Matthias states that their job isn't over yet, reminding both Luri and Alma that the horde of monsters who spawned because of the Dragon Vein Pillar are still lurking in the outskirts. So, the students of the Second Academy go to the front lines in order to get rid of them before they can attack the nearby towns. Matthias's preset traps take care of the first wave of the monsters, and that helps the students deal with the rest. Matthias watches the battle from the city walls and awaits the second wave, where the boss monsters are spawned. So, he teleports with his friends to the front lines, knowing that the academy students aren't strong enough to deal with them alone. He casually throws Iris at one of the giants, who defeats it with a single punch. Following Iris, Alma and Luri join in two and defeat the rest of them. With the second wave being taken care of, the third and final wave spawn a monster known as the Void Ear that grows by devouring the monsters around it. It's basically a tornado, but Matthias is as confident as ever. He decides to use this monster to get maximum loot and overfeeds it with too many Magistones, forcing it to take the form of a mythic-type wolf monster. With proper teamwork, the girls divert the wolf's attention, allowing Matthias to deal a considerable amount of damage to it. But the wolf keeps on regenerating quickly and heals its wounds. So, Matthias casts a spell that deals continuous damage to the monster, immobilizing it, which allows Matthias to behead the monster. The next day, Matthias tells the headmaster his wish to leave the city, as he has done them enough favors and also taken care of all possible threats. He still wants to continue his humanitarian work and explains that he wants to explore around the country to get rid of more dragon veins that can lead to potential threats, because there is nothing for Matthias to learn here. The headmaster allows it and gives him a special scholarship so that he can use the school's help if he ever runs into trouble. Luri and Alma also desire to join Mafias as his adventurers, so the headmaster also gives them the scholarship, allowing them to leave the academy as well. Shortly after, Mafias and his party take their leave from the capital, parting ways with the academy. The girls are quite excited, as they are leaving the capital for the first time in their lives. While walking through the wilderness, Mafias decides to travel to a dungeon called Melkia, which has hundreds of floors. Apparently, it's a dungeon city because it's a city that is built on top of the dungeon. Matthias himself is shocked to learn that such a place exists because, in his past life, there was nothing like that established. He cannot comprehend the fact that people would have the gall to live on top of dungeons that are home to calamitous monsters. According to Alma, Melchia's city brims with life, and most of the people there are adventurers. If they follow the route around the forest, it will take them several days to reach the city. 
But Matthias instead decides to go through the famous forest that is known to be the home of smart monsters. I mean, they can basically use Iris to fly to Malkia, but sure, why not take the challenge? Shortly after, they enter the eerie black forest, hoping to run into the renowned smart monsters. But, strangely enough, they fail to find any monsters around them. Iris becomes hungry as well, so Luri suggests that they take a break and have lunch together. Alma can't wait to bring out some rations from her storage space, but Matthias suggests that they eat some fresh food by going hunting so that they can hit two birds with one stone. In this way, they will get their fresh food and also find the smart monsters that Matthias is intrigued about. But knowing that the girls will take a rather long time to hunt their meal, Matthias goes on his way alone, deep inside the forest. While searching for food, he realizes that he is being followed by cloudless monsters. Because these monsters are moving in a conspicuously orderly fashion, Matthias suspects that someone is commanding them. He realizes that the commander must be a smart monster. Matthias realizes that an intelligent monster is behind him and predicts that it is going to attack him next. The smart monster turns out to be just a monkey, which disappoints Matthias, so he brings its corpse back to the girls and slays it, telling them to use its meat for food. However, the girl is afraid of the monster and also disgusted by its appearance. So, instead, he brings out a giant wild boar from his other dimensional storage, Luri uses her abilities to refine iron from the ground into a cooking pot, and Iris goes to prepare the firewood. Alma goes inside the forest to gather some herbs to make a soup, but when she returns and uses those herbs, the mixture of ingredients causes an explosion. Apparently the problem is related to her having trouble dealing with fire spells when they are cast near any ingredients. So, basically, when she lit up the cooking pot, it blew up the ingredients as well and caused the explosion. In the end, the group manages to cook the boar meat, which looks tasty enough, so they reluctantly eat it and become amazed by the flavors of it. After filling their stomachs, Alma gives the group her special soup as dessert, which apparently got her banned from cooking. Iris is the only courageous one to give the dish a try, and she instantly regrets it as the soup tastes like cat piss. Matthias tells the girls that the monsters of this forest are too afraid to approach them because of Iris's ominous aura. So, he thinks it will be better for them to continue their journey to Melchia City instead of looking for the smart monsters. Moreover, the monkey was the boss monster of this forest, so there's nothing interesting for Matthias to stay here for. Before sundown, Matthias and his party reach the dungeon city of Melchia. Since it's still a city, the group assumes that it will be lively, but they surprisingly find the city to be rather quiet and almost empty. A magical lamp post lights up upon their arrival. Its magic flow acts in a strange manner, making Matthias realize that it is connected to a dragon vein pillar. A shopkeeper in the darkness shouts at Matthias, warning him about the lamp posts and telling him that these lamp posts explode a lot and have caused the deaths of 10 people already. At that very moment, the lamp post explodes, but Matthias saves his friends from getting caught up in the blast just in time. Lurie lashes out at the shopkeeper, asking him why someone would create something so dangerous. The shopkeeper whispers to Lurie in reply telling her that the people of this city didn't have a choice because it was done on the city's orders. The shopkeeper further explains that they used to use Magistone stones before on the lamp posts to light them up. But then one day, their lord announced that Magistones would be their most precious export material. And so, he prohibited the citizens from using them any further. Matthias figures that the lord is the reason why this city is so underpopulated and confirms it from the shopkeeper who tells him that the Lord has sent most of the people of this town inside the 10th floor of the dungeon to subjugate a powerful monster. Matthias understands and realizes how incompetent the Lord of this city is. He takes it upon himself to fix this city and first heads to the Adventurer's Guild to get their permission to enter the dungeon, as a permit from them will be needed to enter the dungeon. However, when Matthias and his party enter the guild and ask for permits to enter the dungeon, the receptionist advises against it, telling them that the permits are no longer issued by the guild but by the lord himself. She explains that the lord will most likely make them make special requests if they take the permit. Basically, they will have to do whatever the lord tells them to in exchange for the permit. 
These requests tend to be absurdly dangerous, and most of them result in casualties. Matthias is up for the challenge, as nothing in the world scares him. Still, he asks the girls if they are okay with participating in this. The girls in unison state that they will follow Matthias wherever he goes. So Matthias requests that the receptionists give them four permits. At that moment, a lady enters the guild, reporting to the adventurers that a sudden monster attack has caused a huge number of casualties. Because there are a lot of injured adventurers, the lady requests a healer to treat the wounded. Unfortunately, there are no adventurers in the guild let alone healers, because all of them have gone to the dungeon. But Matthias here is full of cheating skills, so he volunteers to help and heads to the church, where dozens of heavily injured people are lying in pain. The nurse there has run out of bandages and cannot even stop most of their bleeding. Witnessing such a devastating situation, Matthias asks the lady why there aren't any healers in this town, even though it's full of adventurers. The lady claims that all of the healers were driven out of the town by the Lord because he deemed them a waste of resources. Matthias's grudge against the Lord keeps growing, but for now, he focuses on treating the people in need and decides to heal the ones who are in the most terrible state. Three healers interrupt Matthias, telling him that a child like him cannot barge in here and do as he pleases. Matthias tells the loud, incompetent healer to shut up as he is trying to save his job here. Ignoring the old man, Matthias activates his crest of failure, which is best at intense healing like fixing damaged organs and internal blood vessels. In no time, Matthias brings his first patient into perfect condition, making the three healers realize that this boy is no joke. They cooperate with Matthias and help him treat the wounded as well. After working hard for hours, Matthias manages to heal everyone there and gets the acknowledgement of the Elder Healer. Matthias takes the opportunity to ask the Elder Healer about the previous Lord and why he was replaced by this new incompetent Lord. In reply, the Elder Healer reveals that the previous Lord, who was in perfect health condition, abruptly passed away in his sleep, and so a new man replaced him, who changed this city for the worse. Matthias suspects that the demons are behind the death of the previous lord, so he decides to meet the current lord in order to see if the lord is a demon as well. Matthias writes a letter to the headmaster in order to inform the king about the situation in this city, and he hides the letter under a fake letter in order to avoid any suspicions. They stay in the same hotel room at night, which keeps both Matthias and Luri up all night as they can't believe that they are spending the night with each other. They try calming themselves, telling themselves that there's nothing to be excited about because they are using different beds, but no matter what they do, they fail to fall asleep and stay up all night, hoping that some miracle will cause them to connect together. The next morning, Matthias and his party enter the dungeon and bring back the remains of the strongest monster to the receptionist in exchange for some cash. However, the receptionist fails to give him any because she apparently needs to show the monster loot to the Lord first in order to get his confirmation. The fat, ugly Lord gets the report, and learning that they were able to take down the boss monster, he sends out a group of bandits to get rid of them. Matthias had anticipated this move, so he eagerly waited to unmask this disguised demon. While walking in the streets, Matthias notices a bunch of men spying on his group. So, through telepathy, he informs the girl about it and tells them to act normally, as he wants to trap them. After luring them into an alley, Matthias casts a concealment spell on himself and the girls, making the entire group invisible, which confuses the enemies as they don't understand how this bunch of kids disappeared into thin air. Matthias then casually walks up to them, acting as if he doesn't know them, and asks them for directions to their inn. The bandits give Matthias the direction to his inn, so Matthias asks them how they know where he and his friends are staying. The group of bandits realizes that they have been caught, so they take Matthias hostage. Well, to be more precise, Matthias lets him be taken as a hostage as he wants to meet the Lord. The leader of the group threatens to hurt Matthias if his friends try to move and Matthias also plays along with zero expressions on his face, saying, Please help me guys, I don't want to die. You can see how mortified I am just by looking at my face. Luri and Alma barely control their laughter, seeing Maddie's horrible acting. 
and also play along, asking the bandits what they want from them. From the information they got from the report, Mafias had no contribution in slaying the dungeon boss, so they assumed that he is the weakest out of them all, and that is why they targeted Mafias to be the hostage. The bandits make it clear to both Alma Luri and Iris that if they want their weak friend to survive, they will have to serve the lord of this city from now on. Iris doesn't take the bandits' words seriously, casually walks up to them, and disarms every single one of them without her even trying. The leader of the bandits doesn't understand why this girl is acting so recklessly, even when her friend has been taken hostage. Iris simply doesn't care and also gets rid of the leader by punching him in the face. With all of them knocked out, Matthias casts a tracking spell on them. The enemies say they know about their group and think Matthias is the weakest and can only use healing magic. After that, the bandits threaten the girls, and Matthias orders Iris not to kill the enemies. Iris approaches the opponents and beats up the bandits with ease, hitting them with bare knuckles and defeating them all in just a moment. After the fight, Matthias uses a spell and tracks down the demon who is operating behind the scenes. The next morning, everyone wakes up in the inn when Matthias receives a letter from the king's messenger. After reading the letter, Matthias and his friends head out to meet the messenger, who wants to deliver a message from the king personally at a secret location. At the secret location, Matthias meets with the messenger, who greets them and explains to them that he chose this location in order to ensure that the Lord doesn't learn about their meetup. According to the messenger, the king has received Matthias's detailed report on the exploitation done by the Lord of this city and hence he has given Matthias permission to arrest the Lord to bring him back to custody. With the king's permission, Matthias swiftly tracks down the Lord using the bandits and heads to the Lord's base palace. Seeing that there are no guards outside, Matthias finds it strange. So, he uses his presence detection spell and pinpoints the location of all of those enemies who are stacked inside the palace, eagerly waiting for their arrival. The royal messenger thinks it will be dangerous for them to proceed because the Lord knows of their plans and suggests they withdraw for the time being. But Matthias wants to see what traps the Lord has set for him, so he proceeds to barge inside through the front door. The awaiting enemy can't believe that this fool came in here with only five people in total. They greatly underestimate the strength of Matthias's group and attack them at once. Lurie uses her shield to fend off the attacks and Matthias commends her for getting better at her casting. But Matthias doesn't want to waste any time here by making Alma and Luri take care of these bandits for countless hours, so he zaps all of the enemies using divine lightning spells and takes them down one by one with one strike. Seeing that there are no enemies left standing, the royal messenger is impressed by Matthias and finally realizes why the king told him not to get on Matthias's bad side. Since the building is two stories, the messenger assumes that the Lord is on the second floor, but Matthias's detection skill tells him otherwise and leads him to find a secret door going underground. While they are heading downstairs to find the Lord, the Lord, in the meantime, rejoices, thinking that Matthias' group has been defeated. Matthias comes there and confuses the Lord, who doesn't understand what a kid is doing here. Matthias finds it amusing that the Lord sent his henchmen to hunt him down without even knowing what he looked like. The others also enter there, so the Lord calls Matthias a fool and summons more of his hidden henchmen to attack them. But Matthias, unsurprisingly, instantly defeats all of them. And with the help of the royal messenger, he arrests the Lord for misusing his power. The Lord refuses to be arrested and tells Matthias that if anything happens to him, terrible things will happen. But Matthias is like, no problem, I will deal with it myself because I am overpowered, and knocks him out. Judging by the Lord's confidence, Matthias suspects that demons are using the Lord to get to the dragon vein pillar that is situated inside the dungeon. Matthias also believes that the dragon vein could explode if it is activated by the demons, and so to prevent unwanted casualties. Matthias tells the messenger to go back to the capital and report this to the king because they will have to make a move as soon as possible. At that moment, an earthquake hits them, causing the ground to start to shake. Matthias realizes that it's the work of the demons who are tampering with the dragon vein. He also senses many monsters being spawned who are all heading their way here. 
he calculates that it will take the monsters about two hours to reach Melchia City. So, he quickly goes into the dungeon first in order to stop the demons from further tampering with the dragon vein within these two hours. Iris digs a hole in the wall and discovers the dragon vein. Matthias instructs the girls to prevent the dragon vein from activating and heads off on his way to defeat the demons who are hiding on the nearby dungeon floor. Before leaving, Matthias uses one of his cheat skills and makes it possible for all of them to communicate telepathically, even if they are far away from one another. Luri uses her magical powers to restore the dragon vein back to its original state, while Matthias makes his way towards the demons, defeating all the monsters in the way. Shortly after, he finds the demon inside a magic circle who seems to have been expecting Matthias' arrival. Upon confirming that Matthias is the one who is trying to stop the manipulation of the dragon vein, the demon relays the news to another demon. Matthias taps into their telepathic conversation and learns that this demon's boss is aware of the dangerous power of the dragon veins. Matthias becomes excited as there is finally a chance for him to actually get into a decent fight. So, he first deals with this demon, who blocks his first attack. As the demon uses a specialized barrier to block Matthias's attack, Matthias realizes that the demon is using a barrier that can counter the crest of failure, which makes it clear that this demon's boss anticipated Matthias's arrival at this city. The demon looks down on Matthias's skills, having all of the countermeasures to deal with each and every one of them. But the big boss from the other side tells him not to underestimate Matthias and also warns him not to get in close range. Following the boss's detailed instructions, the demon attacks Matthias with magical spirit balls, but Matthias dodges them with ease. The demon's boss knows that Matthias' crest of failure is the most dangerous crest, so he orders the demon to use ranged attacks. The demon tries to lure Matthias into a trap, but Luri, from afar, disables the demon's traps that are rigged up in the dragon vein. The demon is shocked to see his traps fail and becomes more baffled when Matthias cuts off his telepathic communication with his boss. Matthias launches many strong attacks at the demon, but he keeps deflecting them using his shield, which is made to block the crest of failure's attacks. So, Matthias launches a barrage of attacks to blind the demon's view and breaks his barrier by striking it with his sword. With the barrier broken, the demon desperately communicates with his boss one last time and asks him if Matthias here is the reincarnation of the greatest sage Gaius. Matthias, who overhears their conversation, commends them for having such good instincts, as he never expected anyone to suspect that he is another person from thousands of years ago. The boss refuses to believe that Matthias is Gaius, as he thinks that if it were so, Matthias would have already defeated him. Matthias finds it intriguing that this mysterious boss here knows about his past life, and so he gets eager to find out his identity. The demon's boss orders the demon to use this fortune and attack Matthias with all his strength. Even after getting powers from beyond in exchange for his life, the demon stands no chance and Matthias beheads him. With the demon gone and the dragon vein coming back to its normal stage, the monsters in the city disappear. Matthias praises the girls for doing their work perfectly and tells them that there is only one thing left to do, which is to track down the demon who is working behind the scenes. The demon boss taps into Matthias' communication spell and tells him that he won't be able to track him down even if he tries for a thousand years. Matthias promises the demon that he will defeat him, and the demon, in response, tells him that in order to do so, he will have to find him first. By recording the magic signature of the demon boss, Matthias comes up with an idea to pinpoint the demon's location using a device from thousands of years ago. To get access to that device that he had created thousands of years ago, Matthias will have to cross the border of the kingdom and enter the Radinia Alliance, but they will need the permission of the king first, so they get on their way back to the royal capital. Upon making their return, they come to the shocking revelation that their second academy has been reduced to nothing, and is currently under construction to rebuild the entire thing. The headmaster comes there and becomes overjoyed to see his precious students making their return. Matthias asks him why this place is under construction, and in reply, the headmaster explains that they are actually rebuilding the second academy from scratch because they want it to look like a fortress. 
because of the recent incident, the headmaster doesn't want to endanger any students at his academy. And that is why he is building his academy like a fortress that cannot be penetrated by even demons. With the academy under construction, Matthias asks about the students and if their classes are being suspended. According to Headmaster Eduard, the classes of the second academy students are currently being held in the first academy now that the old headmaster of the first academy is gone. With the rotten root removed, the students of both academies are helping one another. They are also engaged in helping with the construction work, showing how much they care for their academy. With everything explained, Matthias and his group go to Eduard's office, where Matthias tells him about the demon who was responsible for pulling the strings from behind the scenes at Dungeon City. Matthias expresses his wish to find him, and to locate him, he needs something that is across the border with the Radinia Alliance. Fortunately, the Radinia Alliance are allies of this kingdom, so the headmaster thinks it will be possible for the king to help them get across the border. Since the demons are involved again, the headmaster is certain that the king will make this his top priority and come up with a way for Matthias. With that being said, Matthias now has to wait to get permission. So in the remaining time, he offers to help with the construction, to which the headmaster is glad, as he wants all the help he can get. Alma, Luri and Iris also volunteer to help. So the entire party starts working on the construction shortly after. Matthias helps with the engineering and architectural designs of the buildings and suggests new ideas to make the new building more durable than before. While everyone is doing their best to construct the building, Iris is doing her best to destroy it. Regardless of the setback she has created, they are all granted permission from the king, so the adventurer party sets off for the Radinia Alliance. The girls are once again excited to leave because they have never left the kingdom before. They wonder what this new place will look like and hope that they will at least have tasty food to eat. Using the king's special permit, the group passes through all of the border gates and, in no time, reaches their destination, the vast meadows of the Radinia Alliance. Matthias opens up the map to see where the device is and finds out that the area where the device is located has been marked as a restricted region because there are chances of magical calamities occurring there. But there is a way to enter even the restricted zone by becoming authorized personnel. According to the information that Matthias got earlier from the headmaster, the only way for them to enter this region is to increase their adventurer rank to rank A. To increase their ranks, they visit the Adventurer's Guild, where they are greeted by the Guildmaster, who had learned from the King that they would come to this guild for help. The Guildmaster claims to have heard great things about Matthias and his party and also reveals that they plan to enter the restricted area. So, to help them out, he makes a special exception and allows Matthias and his friends to directly take the A-Rank Ascension test. Apparently, the test will be a mock fight against a proctor, and that proctor is Jiluas, a famous S-rank adventurer of Radinia. The guildmaster is surprised to see that Jiluas is here, as the proctor was originally supposed to be someone else, indicating that Jiluas here has taken a special interest in these four adventurers from the Eyes Kingdom. Matthias doesn't care who the proctor is going to be, as he is certain that he will manage to take down anyone, so he tells the guildmaster to go ahead and begin the test. The guildmaster advises against it, telling Matthias that no one has ever passed a test conducted by Jiluas. Still, Matthias persists, so the guildmaster proceeds with it. At the training grounds, Jiluas surprisingly allows all three girls to pass the test without even taking them on in a mock battle, making Matthias question what in the world this dude is up to. It seems that Jiluas only has an interest in Matthias and only wants to have a duel with him. The only reason Jiluas is interested in Matthias is because he's heard a lot about him and wants to face this nobody who's become known as a heroic demon slayer. They enter the arena, and Matthias becomes eager to see what an S-ranked adventurer can do. Jiluas stretches his arms as he is ready to fight seriously, meaning that he is taking Matthias really seriously. Matthias's friends from the stands express their worries for him, and even though they find it hard to imagine that this overpowered mage will lose to this new guy, they hope nothing wrong will happen. As the duel begins, Jiluas deliberately takes a handicap, 
declaring that he won't be using his magical abilities against Mathias, but he allows Mathias to use magic if he wants to. Mathias realizes that Jiluas is only giving him a handicap, because he is certain that he will win if he uses his full power against Mathias, but Jiluas himself claims otherwise, stating that he is not actually trying to give him a handicap. Rather, he just never uses magic. Jiluas draws his sword and only casts a physical enhancement spell on his body. He then charges at Mathias with great speed, but Mathias evades his attack just as quickly as he does. Mathias wonders why Jiluas said he wouldn't use magic, but used it to enhance his physique and weapons. He realizes that Jiluas is casting these spells subconsciously. In any case, they begin fighting with their full force and exchange powerful blows. As the duel looks like it's about to be a stalemate, Jiluas realizes that Mathias is holding back on him, which makes him angry. So, he tells Matty to give up his act and show him his true ability. Bro asked for it, so Mathias gladly used a bit more of his power, causing Jiluas's magic power to grow even stronger. Jiluas leaps towards Mathias and uses Mathias's own skills to confuse him, showing how greatly he can adapt to his opponents. Mathias shows Jiluas his place for copying his skills and defeats him, passing the A-ranked Ascension test as a result. Mathias realizes that the only reason Jiluas didn't use magic was because he lacked the knowledge of spellcasting, so he gives him his own written spell book hoping that this talented young man will surpass him in strength one day. But just as Jiluas begins to read the book, his head begins to boil, so he requests that Matthias first teach him a spell that will allow him to read without getting a headache. Matthias has just the solution and suggests that Jiluas learn a mild healing spell that works well on headaches. Accordingly, Jiluas gives it a try and still gets a headache. Jokes aside, Matthias takes his leave with his team now that all of them are a ranked adventurers. Learning that Matthias is headed to the restricted region of Phokia, Jiluas gives him a heads up, telling him that the city there is pretty ominous and many adventurer parties have gone missing on their way there. With this in mind, Matthias and gang start heading to the restricted region. When crossing their first checkpoints, the guards give all of them passes which contain a coded message that Mathias deciphers. It reads that a party of four questionable high-ranking adventurers is coming and should be dealt with immediately. So, basically, if Mathias and the girls show their passes to the next guards, they will read the coded message and take action against them. Because Mathias has dealt with such coding technologies before, he knows that they are the same as the ones that the demons use, which means that the restricted region is under a demon's control. Speaking of trouble, some mercenaries are already on their way to deal with Mathias and their group, and Mathias notices them from a far distance. Since Jiluas mentioned that high-ranked parties tend to go missing here, Mathias realizes that the demons are responsible for getting rid of them. Mathias can easily deal with the mercenaries, but he instead decides to quietly make them unconscious so that they can avoid any loud commotion. To render the mercenaries unconscious, Mathias hands Luri and Alma a magic item and tells them to sneak behind them and use it to put them to sleep, to make sure that the mercenaries don't get suspicious. Mathias also creates the illusions of Luri and Alma. After they silently take their leave, Mathias then calls the mercenaries out. With their cover blown, the mercenary group takes immediate action and fires at Mathias and Iris with a rain of arrows. While the two overpowered beings are distracting the mercenary group, Luri makes her way there and activates the magic item, which releases a gas that takes out every single one of them. Luri and Alma forget that they can also be affected by the gas, and as a result, they also fall asleep. But thankfully for them, Mathias reaches there in time and rescues them. Mathias arrives at Phokia and immediately senses demonic signatures around the city. Luri can also sense around 30 demonic signatures, and that makes her question how there can be so many. Mathias states that normally demons don't like to work in groups, but seeing that they are all in cahoots, he realizes that the demons residing here are demi-demons. Apparently, demi-demons are a rare offshoot of the demon race, and unlike the pure demons, they work in groups. 
Seeing how high the security is, Mafias looks for a way to get in and discovers a hidden passage that leads them straight into the city. Upon entering the passage, the group finds out that it's just a sewer system. In the heavy stench, they keep moving onwards when suddenly Mafias detects a demon guard ahead of them. He doesn't want to attract any attention, so he casts a stupefaction spell on the demon, dulling its senses, and then silently heads into the city. Upon entering the city, Mathias cannot help but wonder why Melchia is so desolate. Although there are many townspeople around the streets, it still looks creepy and weird. That's when Mathias notices that the townspeople are under a spell called Thought Paralysis, a type of stupefaction spell. Luri thinks that this must be the work of the demons, and so they embark on another mission to fix this city instead of looking for Mathias's much-needed machine. Mathias notices that all of the townspeople are gathering up in front of a factory where a demon is casting thought paralysis on everyone there. Mathias decides to investigate this factory, but before going any further, he casts a defense spell on his party members to prevent the thought paralysis spell from affecting them. With this done, they join the lined up crowd and act like zombies as well, allowing them to enter the factory. Inside, the stupefied people are refining some kind of ore in large production. Mafias recognizes the magical ore inside the rocks and states that these can be used in explosives. As a matter of fact, these explosives are so dangerous that a ton of them can blow up an entire kingdom. But refining them to that stage would take decades. So, for now, the kingdom and its people are safe, and Mafias is glad that he has discovered their plans. Luri wonders what they should do, and Mathias states that the plan is simple. They will be wiping out all of the demi-demons in the city. But before attacking them, they will have to separate the demi-demons, because the demon-demons apparently stay within the range of their shared consciousness. So Mathias comes up with an alternative plan, making a foolproof idea to take them all out. First, Mathias releases a large magical signature in the outer area of the city, luring the demons there. But as they reach the place, they find it to be completely empty. After encircling the area, they manage to find Iris. But before they can capture her, Matthias takes them out. Just like this, slowly and carefully, Matthias takes down the demi-demons one by one. The demons, including their leader, don't understand what's happening. That's when Matthias reveals to us what his plan was. Before coming to this city, Matthias had masked Iris's magic power and decided to unmask it all at once to grab the enemy's attention. When the demi-demons got lured by the magic signature coming out of Iris, they gathered around her. Then, Matthias's plan was to make Luri and Alma move around in the alleys to distract the demons and not allow them to form groups. That's how Matthias was able to take out the demons one at a time. Currently, both Matthias and Iris eliminate the demons one after another. Seeing how strong Iris is, some of the demons try to fall back. But Matthias doesn't let go of them and finishes them off. With eight demons down, Matthias predicts that the demon leader will think that Iris is the one picking them off. Using this opportunity, he instructs Luri and Alma to distract the demons by infusing some magi stones with an explosion spell and throwing them at them. While the injured demons try to regain their composure, Matthias comes from behind and takes them out. The leader of the demi-demons still can't comprehend what's going on. The leader, whose brain is connected with all of the demons, gets filled with manipulated misinformation by Matthias, which leads him to believe that the entire town is filled with traps. So, he tells the other demons to use their detection spell to detect the traps. Matthias and his party members conceal their magic to avoid detection, and then take out a few more demons. With 22 demi-demons taken down, the leader finally steps down and checks one of the corpses, where he discovers two magical signatures on it, making him realize that it's not just Iris who is attacking them, but another one of her accomplices who has hid himself. Mathias notices that the demons are gathering in one spot, meaning that they have figured out that there are more hidden intruders. So, he forgets the plan and heads straight to the location to take them head to head. The leader tells the demons who are still alive that they only have to take care of the hidden assassin, and then they will be able to deal with the rest of them. 
to take revenge for his lost brothers. The leader decides to burn this fire with fire and decides to use the magic explosives to deal with Matthias's gang. But before the demons can go fetch the magic crystals, Jiluas surprisingly shows up there and starts to take each and every one of them out. He goes out against the demon leader all by himself and remains confident even though he is surrounded from everywhere. Matthias reaches there and helps Jiluas out by taking down the surrounding demons. Iris joins in as well and assists Matthias in eliminating more of the demons. With only the demon leader remaining, Jiluas fights him with all he has, as he begins to struggle because he is not one of the main characters and takes several heavy blows, Matthias comes to assist him. But Jiluas states that he doesn't need anyone's help and persists in fighting the demon leader alone. He reveals that he has learned a spell from Matthias's spell book and uses it against the demon leader. As the intense battle damages them both, Jiluas comes out as the winner in the end with a flashy attack. With the demons gone, the townspeople are lifted of their curse. However, the demon's leader reveals himself to be still alive and tries to take at least one of Matthias's group members out before going to the demon version of Valhalla. Matthias doesn't understand how this demon is still moving because it was dead moments ago. That's when the big boss speaks up through the demon leader, revealing to have taken over his dead body to communicate with Matthias. The big boss tells Matthias that he will soon destroy the seal and revive completely, indicating that he is not yet alive. For now, Matthias focuses on treating the wounds of Jiluas, who is bleeding out completely. After patching up his wounds, Jiluas gets up on his feet and introduces himself to the crowd as an S-ranked adventurer. With his status, he assures the townspeople that everything will be fine and temporarily takes charge of the town to bring the town back under control. He recruits some people to be the sub-leaders and randomly appoints one of them as the provisional lord of this city making Mafias realize that bro here doesn't care for the townspeople at all. Anyway, now that things are taken care of, Mafias and his party take their leave, bidding farewell to their newly made friend Jiluas. They continue on their way to find the locator machine and enter a danger zone area deep inside the forbidden region, where soon Mafias discovers a ruined site. According to Mafias, this very ruined site has the device that he was after. He opens an entrance inside the ruins and heads in with the gang. Deep inside there, Mafias finally finds the device and activates it. In the meantime, Alma and Luri explore the ruins in order to find hidden treasures. And Luri first comes back with a sword that looks cool, but doesn't have any magical powers imbued in it because Mafias, in his previous life, only made it to pass his time. Alma finds a rather heavy spell, but it can be dangerous to use causing the user to evaporate if the user pours too much magic into it. Iris comes back with canned goods that are from thousands of years ago, but when she opens them up, the stench knocks her out. I mean, what did she expect? Fresh floral aroma. Anyway, Mathias activates the device, uses the metal he collected from Fokia, and finds out that its signature is from the same boss demon who was in charge at Melkia. Because it's the same boss demon who was behind the schemes at Melkia and Fokia, Mathias realizes that the boss demon is working on an evil plan to destroy all of humanity, to stop him from achieving his goals. Mathias uses the demon's signature he found in the dungeon and uses it to locate the demon. However, the machine malfunctions badly and prints out many errors, making Mathias realize that this is only happening because his opponent is still sealed. But because the demon is able to operate almost freely, Mathias figures that his seal is almost lifted. The system shows the photo of the boss demon, whom Mathias recognizes at first glance as someone from his past life whose name is Zardias. At his current stage, Mathias doesn't think that he has the power to defeat Zardias. According to Mathias, Zardias was sealed thousands of years ago because the mages back then weren't able to finish him off. Zardias is so powerful that Mathias believes that even if they train for hundreds of years, they won't be able to defeat him. And even if they do become strong enough to defeat Zardias, the rest of the world will be brought to extinction. Mathias comes up with the idea to use the powerful magic items that he had crafted in his previous life. But because most of them have ended up scattered all over the world, 
he has no option but to go on a journey looking for them. He detects one of the magical weapons at the Eye's Kingdom, so he decides to head back to the capital. However, on their way back, Zardius's aura causes Iris to shake badly, making Matthias realize that Zardius has broken off his seal completely. In a race against time, Matthias tells both Luri and Alma to get the sword for him, as he is certain that Zardius will come for him first, as he is the only obstacle in his path to destroy mankind. Matthias awaits Zardius to come with Iris and enhances his sword beforehand to launch the first attack. Lori and Alice make their way to the royal castle when suddenly they notice the sky opening up. Zardias makes his grand appearance out of the portal, and to prevent him from making any move, Iris blasts him with her maximum power. Still, nothing happens. Rather, it just helps Zardias wake up properly. Matthias wonders how he is going to stand against this legendary demon lord, who is completely invincible. For now, Matthias tries to buy themselves time for Luri and Alma to return with an overpowered weapon. But Zardias isn't in the mood for small talk, so he brings out his weapon and tries to take out Iris first. To save Iris from being sliced in half, Matthias uses his maximum defense spell but ends up leaving his guard wide open. Meanwhile, Luri and Alma rush straight to the treasury with the king's permission. Mathias knows that he stands no chance against Zardias, so he considers sacrificing his own life for the sake of mankind. Luri and Alma scours through the treasury looking for the overpowered weapon, but because they have no idea as to how it looks, they end up wasting some crucial time. Luri finds an odd-looking black box, which resonates with Mathias's magic signature. So she opens it and finds the legendary weapon that Matthias needs to win against Zardias. Zardias brings the demon back to life who died inside the capital, and he stops Luri and Alma from reuniting with Matthias. Alma and Luri manage to defeat him, but another demon blocks their path and tells them that if they do not comply, he will decapitate their innocent classmates, revealing that he has taken hostage two students. Matthias realizes that Zardias resurrected the bodies of the demons who were stored inside the capital in order to hurt Luri and Alma. Zardias figures out what Matthias prioritizes, two things the barrier and his friends, so Zardias targets them both, forcing Matthias to take the defensive approach and suffer himself. Alma and Luri put down their weapons to save the two innocents. Matthias also realizes that they won't be able to make it here in time, so he decides to sacrifice himself and prepares to use his remaining life and magical power to activate his reincarnation spell once again. He doesn't even consider the fact that if Zardias destroys humanity completely, he won't be able to reincarnate because there will be no people left in the future to be reborn. The entire second academy comes to help Luri and Alma fight the demon, and with their help, the girls defeat the demon and continue head on on their way to where Matthias is. Speaking of Matthias, he channels his life energy into magic power to increase his combat potential. He still claims to have full faith in Luri and Alma that they will be able to reach here in time. To buy them time to come here, Iris launches another dragon breath attack at Zardias. But this time before she can finish casting her spell, Zardias casts a counter spell on her and forces her to take her human form. This causes Iris to fall from the sky leaving Matthias all alone to fight Zardias. Luri reaches there and throws Matthias the god sword, but as he grabs onto it and smiles, Zardias stabs him through his back into his chest. The villain always makes the same dumb mistake of not finishing off the main character, and this time, it's nothing different. Zardias brings his weapon out of Matthias's body, leaving him to freefall to his death. But the power of friendship and anime doesn't let Matty Kuhn die. He turns into a ball of light and returns to his original state, revealing that this legendary sword's ability revived him back to his original state. Apparently, and very conveniently, this very sword is the pinnacle of Matthias's craft from his past life, and to activate this sword's abilities, the wielder must lose their life. In exchange, the sword grants its wielder a tremendous amount of magic and also revives them. With God Swad's boosts, Matthias becomes more agile and faster than Zardias. The magic flowing inside his body is so intense that he is barely able to control it. 
Zardias doesn't think that Mafias will last too long because his frail body won't be able to handle this much magical power. However, Mathias states otherwise, revealing that he knows ways to reanimate himself just like Zardias did to his demon subordinates. Zardias can't believe that this young boy is familiar with such forbidden and advanced skills. So, he demands Mathias reveal his true identity. But Mathias doesn't satisfy him with an answer, and just declares himself as the strongest sage who happens to have the weakest crest. With swift technique, Mathias decapitates Zardias with a single strike, and as Zardias fades away in nothingness, he tells Mathias that more demons like him will be unleashed, and they will surely destroy humanity. With the biggest threat gone for good, Mathias descends to the ground and is immediately hugged by Luri, who is overjoyed by the fact that her unofficial husbando is still alive. She gets her face close to his face to do the thing, but the headmaster comes there, ruining the moment for both of them. Mathias is happy to see all the familiar faces and offers to help them fix the damage that he caused during his fight with Zardias. But before that, Mathias disposes of his god sword because it is apparently a one-time use magic sword. All comes back to normal, and Mathias and his party are summoned by the king, who rewards Mathias with the god sword, not knowing that Mathias has already broken it into pieces. He then gives all four of them access to the treasury, telling them to take whatever they need from it, so Alma gladly requests some, as she wants money above anything else. At the treasury, Mathias finds an arrow made out of adamantite that can be the perfect weapon for Alma. But the bow was apparently sold to a metal scrap company, so Mathias heads to the company's store, where the owner reveals that he has turned the bow and other broken scraps into a block of metal. Still, Mathias buys all of the metal blocks, hoping that he will be able to extract the adamantite out of them. Iris takes an interest in pretty stones, and so Mathias buys some for her. He gives everyone gifts except for the person to whom he should give gifts, so Alma shows him the right path and suggests that he buy some expensive jewels for Luri. Accordingly, Mathias buys a crystal block in secret and heads out of the shop when the headmaster approaches him and takes him to the royal castle on an emergency notice. There, the captain of the knight's order shows a human-sized wooden puppet with sharp weapons attached to it. Apparently, 300 of these puppets have shown up in the neighboring empire and have caused terror there. Mathias takes a quick inspection of the puppets and discovers that they are powered by human life energy. Mathias suspects that a demon is behind this creation as well, and they are probably on their way to take over the neighboring empire. So, he takes the mission once again to subjugate the never-ending, annoying demons. Later at night, he talks to Luri in private, under clear moonlight, and tells her to close her eyes for a moment. As she does so, he comes close to her, but instead of giving her a kiss, he gives her a pendant that he made using the jewel he had bought earlier from the store. Luri cherishes this gift from Matthias and tells him that she will always treasure it. The next day, the new heroes once again set out on a journey to Sihil Empire, and their adventurers have just begun. Thanks for watching. If you want season 2 of this anime, let me know in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more anime content. See you later, bye.